Have you ever felt a spark deep within, a voice that says, this is what I love, this is what I wish to do? The question is, how many of us truly listen to that voice? How many of us nurture it or we let it fade away? Good evening, I'm Regan. I'm a photographer, sculptor, potter, and a filmmaker. I'm passionate about all of them under the wider umbrella of visual arts. These aren't just my hobbies. They have shaped my journey in many profound ways. Currently, I'm a teacher. I teach sculpture making and pottery in this beautiful campus of ours. Passion isn't just about discovering what you love. It's about embracing it and letting it guide you to take meaningful action. And my story begins right here in this beautiful campus. In the year 1992, my parents moved in as teachers. My father taught sculpture and my mother taught painting. I was a very quiet child, often lost in my own world. Academics wasn't my strong suit. I found subjects like maths and science incredibly challenging. As I grew up, my academic challenges were painfully obvious. I was the child who got the class average down, and my name topped almost every remedial class list possible. And my parents, being teachers here, had to have their one-on-one -on -one sessions with my teachers almost on a regular basis. And I was often told, in order, in order to have a good future, you need to be good in academics. And I wondered to myself, what is my future going to be like? And what am I good at? It was this desperate attempt to find out what am I good at. Growing up, I watched my father sculpt and my mother paint. It was a very unconscious form of learning. I observed the techniques and processes by simply being around them. I enjoyed creating art myself. I liked capturing a fleeting moment with a camera, working with clay, or even painting. And I had this feeling like, this makes me happy. And that ignited a spark in me that I could not do with other academic learning. So here's the thing, when you're not good at something, the world doesn't hesitate to point it out. Your friends might joke, the society may judge, or sometimes even our teachers may not be able to understand what we want. And it's extremely important for us to identify that spark, that voice that says, I'm good at this, and this makes me happy. And for me, that voice was art. Post-schooling, I went on to pursue fine arts. The course focused more on skill development across various genres of visual art. And choosing the less traveled path meant that I need to put in more hard work and effort. And I had the sense of insecurity and fear of messing up. So for being double sure, I had to seek every opportunity to learn. So after the college in the evenings, I would work at ad agencies, production houses, and photography studio, learning everything I could. I almost spent three years of my time working at ad agencies and not even being paid much. But I have no regrets about it, because it was one of the most intense learning phases of my life. And I had a couple of small wins. I got to publish my work in the newspaper, had my own art exhibition, conducted my own photo shoots. They not only gave me an insight of how the industry operates, but also showed me how a live project happens. And most of it all, it helped me put together a portfolio that propelled my career forward. In the year 2010, my life took a transformative turn. I was accepted both into NID Ahmedabad and IIT Bombay for my masters. And this selection was a very important validation for me, validation of the work I do and an affirmation that I'm on the right path. I chose to pursue my masters of design from IIT Bombay, and the two years of intense course was totally worth it. And the faculty there often focused on design process and the possible impact our work could have. And the idea of impact affected me. Most of my project was revolving around documentaries, understanding people and their stories. And my first educational or academic project was a documentary on the elderly woman who collects leaves for a living. I would like to share a short glimpse of what she does.
this story of her affected me. I got curious about people and their stories or what they do for a living. And then came the big decision of life, placements. I was placed as a designer at Samsung. Everybody around me was joyed and thrilled about it. And I was not comfortable with the whole 9 to 5 concept. I wanted to explore more and do a lot more things. And after some serious conversation with my family, I decided and I called up the HR and I declined the offer. He was surprised and he asked why. Not a very conventional answer, but I said I want to explore life. I wanted to photograph, sculpt and do a lot more. And after that, carefully analyzing the skills I have, skills I could make a career out of, I chose photography. I have photographed everything from a, large, from a small jewelry to a large aeroplane, from many commercial shoots for fashion magazines and labels, magazine covers and editorials. I even captured people in love and captured the big day. While doing all this, I often thought of the impact I could create with my work. I tried to balance my commercial shoot with my self-initiated projects. I met artisans whose joint work was infectious. Although they were not earning much, but the sincerity and the dedication that they had towards their work was very inspiring. I documented the crafts of making lamps of Nachar coal and also the bronze sculptors of Swami Malai. While doing this, I also made my little sculptures. And in this journey, I also worked as an assistant director in a film, got to have a small appearance in it too. By doing all this, I was only trying to keep the inner child alive, pursuing everything I could do for learning. I had done more than 200 commercial projects yet there was something missing. I often discussed with my wife that I'm searching for something that I do not know what it is yet. And that's when Lawrence School of Dale happened again. But this time, I came back as a teacher. I'm a firm believer of creative art education. When a child learns, chooses to learn sculpture or pottery, it is my responsibility to respect that interest and nurture it. Learning art goes beyond making beautiful sculpture and pottery. It has a lot of impact on the emotional and mental well-being of the child. As a class, we begin with play. It is to get comfortable with the materials like clay. They, then we start off with making a simple animal or a bird sculpture, which where I simplify the complex form into simple geometrical shape that they already know with the math, from the math class. They learn to make those shapes, they combine them, and they get to make their first sculpture. The ability to make their first sculpture gives them the confidence and encouragement to learn more they start to believe that they can also make artwork. And this is a very important win at that age to pursue a passion or even an interest for that matter. And as the classes go, as the classes go, the skills get better. They move on to make much bigger work. The skills are improved and the work gets more bigger and complex. And making art is just a tangible result that we see in a, in a finished work. The, res the impact is far more than that. When we work with our hands, we engage in different parts of our brain that enhances focus, develops confidence, and reduces stress. And working with a material like clay, which allows for constant reworking and experimentation, fosters a growth mindset. And in, in today's technologically evolving world, where digital interaction and technology is in our fingertips, it's even more important that we involve ourselves in creatively engaging work with our hands. And most of it, most of it all, an uh, important life lesson that art teaches is delayed gratification. It teaches us that nothing comes so easy. A good result needs effort, dedication, and hard work. I'd like to share a short clip of what my kids do in my class.
I discovered the missing puzzle I was searching for. I found my purpose and happiness in teaching. And I'm very proud and happy to share that I teach over 300 students to work with clay and express themselves using clay. I discovered the change I wanted. I was fearless in pursuit of what set my soul on fire. I urge everyone to explore the unknown, be curious and be fearless. Your inner voice will take you to a happy place like mine did. Thank you.